Hello developers, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to talk about composition. Um, it's one of the basic idea of doing any kind of software development. Uh, well, in React world, composition means you can uh, split your component into smaller pieces and compose them back together in a more flexible way. It's one of the fundamental idea or philosophy uh, behind the React uh, itself. And in today's video, we are going to refactoring a not so composable uh, component into a more uh, smaller pieces and a more composable manner, uh, which is uh, pretty aligned with the fundamental philosophy. And you will see how the composition can help you to think of your overall uh, component design. So let's get started. The example we are going to use in today's video is a very simple user dashboard page. It has a few sections on the page. Uh, so basically there's a user info and there's a friend list. Um, and you know, each friend has some basic information as well, just like the user profile. And uh, after that is a list of posts. It might be something that uh, a newsletter or something that you, you might be interested, interested in. So assume we have the code called use dashboard. Uh, it has a user and a post as a um, passing parameter. If you look at the, uh, the, uh, the usage, we will use the user dashboard, passing a user, passing a, a list of posts, and then we try to see what the result on the page like this. And the user object has a name, has a uh, in description and uh, avatar, and also a friend list. So in the friend list, it's also a user object. It has a similar structure. And for the post, it's just a few articles uh, you can think of that has author and a summary. Uh, in the real world uh, scenario, it might be more complicated, but for now, uh, in this example, uh, we don't have to consider that much uh, complexity in the uh, page. So the user dashboard uh, component at the moment is not super, uh, you know, complicated. It's just like a very simple page. It doesn't have the fancy uh, CSS or, you know, it's pretty much like a static components uh, at the moment. And the component at the moment is a single big uh, component. You can see it accepting the user and posts. It will uh, have something to render for the brief uh, or, you know, the profile section the avatar and the description. And also it has a list of friends, uh, a list of posts. So think of like you are the only person who are maintaining the page, the, the profile page. It might be not a very big problem because you always, uh, it's always you to change the uh, structure. Like whenever, uh, let's say, for example, we want to add some links, uh, social media links, for example, uh, we will go to the user dashboard and uh, in here uh, we we'll probably will add a new section uh, or maybe just uh, doing a div here and add the social media links. That means we will need to change the user object, the user type here. We we'll probably will add a social media list and it has a lot of links. And in here we will map that links to a uh, a few icons and then you can click the icon to go to the actual social media page. And let's say um, we, on the other day, we want to change something on the uh, friends list. Let's say we want to show um, the friends, um, I don't know, when you hover on it, it will, shows, um, it will show a pop-up, for example. And that's also fine because you, you are the only author or uh, you are the only developer who makes the change or maintain the user dashboard. But it's not always the case, right? So as your application grows, you probably will need more and more developers to working on a code base. Then that might have some conflict. Like let's say that there's more change needed on the user section but the post it's remain always remain the same or like it's not changing as often. Um, and uh, you, you want to avoid that kind of conflict uh, across teams. 
For example, the, the user section or friend section is maintained by a team, a separate team, let's say. Well, the post is maintained by another. And you don't want to make this single file as the, a battlefield, like everyone is changing the code here. Uh, especially think of the, uh, the test, the UI test, the um, uh, storybook you might have for these uh, components. Um, and you want to separate them out into different places or separate modules so that the people can change that more uh, individually. Um, and that's basically the idea of the uh, modularity or composition. So basically we need a way to split the component and form the component in a way that easy to modify without conflict with others. So naturally we could uh, in the UI, let's say this section Sorry, this section looks like a pretty standalone. We could extract that into a separate component. Um, and the front list um, sounds pretty much a standalone as well. So it has friends. It's all about the uh, friend related um, content. And for the post, uh, it's a similar concept. We could have a, a post list component, which uh, responsible for all the post changes. And to make that change in our static component is relatively easy. So we could simply extract this part uh, into a component called user brief, let's say. In WebStorm, we could do an automatic uh, refactoring. Uh, we can do command shift A uh, to um, start the action. We call extract uh, component, let's say, and we give it a function and we give the component a name. Let's see, it's a user uh, brief. Uh, and we'll create the function component uh, called user brief and it contains all the uh, information here. So we can do that uh, pretty much easily uh, like so. And we probably need to pass in the user directly into the um, user brief component. And uh, let's say it's a user, uh, sorry, we do simply do a user uh, here and uh, we will replace this into the user uh, type, right? So that way we can easily use a user pre uh, brief and uh, it's, it won't change the overall uh, behavior, but we do have a small function here that representing the uh, user brief selection, which is the uh, avatar, the name and the description. Um, so similarly, we can do, because uh, the friend section, it has a title and a list, which is a pretty self-contained and uh, um, it's a unit or a concept that we can talk about. Let's say we have a friend list, which we can extract the, um, it as a friend list component. We can manually extract a component called uh, friend list here and uh, I'm thinking of we will need a list of friends and then in the component we'll do exactly the same thing here and we will return uh, this list okay it, uh, we need a parent which is empty uh, fragment and uh, we can move that into the fragment, uh, something like that. And then we can use this friend list component uh, right beneath the user. Uh, and the friends is the user the friends. Uh, and we don't need this uh, section anymore. And on the UI, it should be exactly the same. If we refresh the page, it does the same thing. Uh, and uh, yeah, similarly for this one, we could create another component called post list, let's say, uh, which accepting a uh, posts. Um, uh, the post is a post list, and we will return uh, a fragment first. Sorry, it will return a fragment, and inside it, it will be the list. 
uh, and we will copy this pre, uh, post list uh, here and uh, pass in the posts uh, from the outside world and then remove the whole section here so now if we look at the ui there's nothing changed mm, but in the in the code here we have three we have three um, small function extracted and we should normally move them into their own um, component of their own module or their own file for example the friend list we could in we could move the friend list into uh, a friend list of tsx um, and we do the refactoring uh, for the use brief as well we do move that to the use brief uh, for the post list we do the same now we have uh, three usage of the uh, small components uh, well for each of them let's say for the user brief whenever i want to make some change on the user section which is uh, the first section here i don't have to i don't have to read a lot of code <coughs> i don't have to read a lot of code like before i simply go to the user brief and then modify whatever uh, required here in a in this smaller component Similar thing for the friend list. Um, I, because it's already, because it's already isolated in the friends section. So whenever I make change for the friend, I can easily, um, I can easily locate the file and uh, make the change. <clears throat> That's one of the benefit. Uh, it's easier to debugging, easier to uh, testing, and easier to uh, modify changes or find find the place you need to make the changes. Another benefit of such composition, it encourages you to reuse your component. So for example, if, if we have a smaller user brief, we could potentially extract something out as a avatar name description as a smaller component, and that could be used in here as well. So if we have a you know user info component which accepting the uh, name, description, and the avatar. Uh, the only difference between these two is the layout. It kind of swapped. But we could make a component called user info and um, use that as a module in both places, uh, here and the friend list. The friend list. We kind of have the autumn component that we can build on top of. Uh, this is a user app. This is the user section, for example. It could be used in another page even. Let's say this is the profile page. Maybe we have a timeline page. We could use the uh, same component. Well, in the old structure, it's not, it's not possible to uh, reuse the component because it's all in one place. Uh, the, basically, you need to copy paste to kind of share, but that will introduce more um, bugs potentially. All right, that's about the composition principle with example. If you enjoyed the video, I would encourage you to buy a copy of my recent book, React Editing Patterns. Uh, and in the book, I have discussed a lot of similar patterns uh, with the same uh, kind of format. Uh, we would talk about the uh, example of a bad, a bad design first, or like a concurrent example. Um, we would say in a, in a day to day work. And then we will talk about some design principles like a single responsibility or open close or the design, the dependency inversion. Uh, and then in a pattern, well, we talk about the pattern. Uh, I would walk you through the example, how do we refactor the example into a better state. Um, also in a book, uh, I have discussed a lot of um, uh, practices like a test-driven development, the refactoring uh, with React, uh, which is pretty important. I think every developer should um, use or at least understand what's a benefit or how to do it uh, in that day-to-day -day work. The book is available on Amazon and uh, Pact. I will put a link in the description below. And that's about the book React Adding Patterns. So having that said, I will keep posting 
new videos on this uh, on the patterns I discuss in the book uh, in this in this channel. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you're interested in the topic and um, turn on notification as well. And if you have any other interesting topics you want me to discuss, please share that in the comments below as well. And I will see you in the next video.